Hi, Shane here. You're watching Sam for God. This is Mark. Check her out. So, hi, guys. Uh, hi, guys. <laughs> hello, it's my brother over here. Uh, we just got off that bus over there, which has Harry Potter stuff on it. Obviously, it means that we're going to the Harry Potter studio. I love very, riding buses. It's very exciting because um, even though this opened about two years ago, I think, we've never been. So, yeah, I'm very excited to finally go in it and see everything that's in it and stuff like that. So I thought I'd take you along with me, as always. And, yeah. just before the entrance area and there's loads of pictures of all the cast members from the film everywhere, there's Lucius Malfoy, Hermione, everyone, everywhere and we've got all um, our like guides as well, digital guides, it should be interesting because it's obviously it's nice to like learn more about Roy's already got his on <laughs> and yeah there's a car as well over there look that's cool that's the car that Ron and uh, Harry go on in High Potter 2 so this is where Harry lived when he lived at the at his um, uncle's house. It's tiny, isn't it? Crazy. Tucked under the front. That's amazing. And as you come on in, you'll be able to tell that it was also one of the largest. Now, it originally stood on a sound stage just over to your left before it was brought over here piece by piece for the tour. Now, you will also notice as you come on in that the lights are low, the tables are all dressed. This is what we call in the film industry a hot set. So we just watched a video and I nearly cried. I got goosebumps. How are you doing, Reza? This is really cool. We're in the Great Hall now and you can see all the tables and everything and all the costumes and literally I, got I, I nearly cried, like I said. Um, Hello I once again, everybody. I know you've only been in here for a few minutes, oh, but I'll just point gosh. out a few details. I still can't get over the Great Hall, guys. Literally still can't get over it. You can still see the costumes over there, all the professors and Hagrid and everyone, um, McGonagall, Snape, everyone's over there. It's just like some information of all the people that were involved in the film. Like the producers, David Heyman, who's absolutely amazing. I, I love that man. Just, I think he's awesome. And Chris Columbus, who for me is my favourite Harry Potter director. He did the first and second Harry Potters. And I think he's brilliant. I, the, the first and second Harry Potter are my two favourite Harry Potter films. I don't know why, I just love them. It's just, they're very nostalgic. I think they were made exactly how they should have been made. So, yeah, but all the other ones here was for him as well. The other directors. The Great Hall, which you just saw, which we were just in, you can see a small design of it here. It's just incredible how much detail went into it and how much work went into it. Like The film that we just watched earlier, the one that made me cry nearly, it was just amazing. Like, you, you could easily tell it showed exactly how much hard work goes into making such amazing films like Harry Potter, such successful films, because it's difficult. All the details, everything that goes into this place is, you know, you can't just, it's not just the actors, it's not just... It's just amazing to see how much thought goes into it. And I mean, I love Harry Potter anyway. I read the first book when I was like, I don't know, very young, a kid, eight maybe. So it just means a lot to me. 
Guys, this is obviously one of my favourite places here. It's a chocolate feast area from the film. You can see all the chocolates. Obviously none of them are actually real, but they look real. They look amazing. Look at all of that. Look at all this ice cream with all the chocolate on it. This is incredible, guys. It's amazing. Either just some of the wigs that some of the actors in the uh, film wear. There's Draco Malfoy, Tom Felton, Lucius Malfoy up there. Okay, guys, so this is Richard Harris's wig. And he is also my favourite Dumbledore. I don't know why it's also, he's my favourite Dumbledore. I was really sad when he passed away and couldn't do the rest of the films, but... Oh my god, this is amazing. It's so cool. Sorry? <laughs> we joke us. We basically think that it's annoying that he died, so yeah. So you might be able to see the Hogwarts gates uh, just behind me over there, which looks amazing. It's just so grand, like, everything is really cool. And Honestly, at the moment, I feel like I'm in Disneyland, which is weird, but it's because everything is so magical and I want to literally like spend the whole day or more here. I feel like it's not enough the amount of time that you get given, like three hours, they say, or something. This is a Gryffindor Boys' dormitory. Uh, and the funny thing is, everything looks really small, like the, the, the beds and stuff. Everything, in fact, looks smaller than it looks on screen, which is which is how it always is with films and stuff. Um, sets normally look a lot smaller in real life than they do when you see it on the screen. And, I mean, my brother was saying he can't believe how people would like the, the boys used to actually fit in these places because they're very small. Look at them. I don't know how they come across it on, on camera, but they are pretty small. And that's the design of it here as well. So there you have the Gryffindor common room, like, lady person. What's she called? She's got a name? I forgot. The fat lady, I think that's what we call her. She's still over there. It's so cool. It's like such an iconic part of Harry Potter, that lady. And I remember, like... I literally visualised her the same way that she ended up being in the films when I was reading the books, which is amazing. It's just so cool. Yeah. That's a lot of what was just kind of drumming his hands because he was a massive pigeon. So all of the people were the next one. It was just a lot easier to create a new one instead of Here you've got all the portraits and stuff that you see. Again, it's crazy how much work and detail went into every single one of them. Like you just see it for like a few seconds in the film, you don't really pay that much attention to it. But so many artists had to work on every single one of them to make them all as great looking as they could. And as you can see here, it says, yeah, nearly 350. 350, that's insane. Behind me you can see Harry, Hermione and Ron's um, outfits from the third film, there's no Azkaban. These ones are very, very well known. Like, you, you look at that and you know it's Hermione's outfit because they're so like well known, you just, you just recognise them. Yeah, you can see there, everything's there. Ron's taller than all of them, obviously. So we've got the Gryffindor common room behind me, which looks so cool. Obviously exactly like it is in the film, which is why it looks really cool. But, um, what I really thought was cute was the, the jumpers over there on top, the one for Harry and Ron. The one that Ron um, got for Harry um, for one Christmas or something. I just think it's so cute and yeah, it looks, everything looks really cool. We're about to go inside Dumbledore's office now, which is over here. His favourite uh, set of the whole thing, apparently, was Dumbledore's office, uh, which you can see here. Um, and I can understand why, because it looks amazing. Uh, all the bookshelves and all the books as well. And apparently, all the books that you can see here um, are actually old um, phone books that they used. Um, most of them, anyway, apparently. And you can see um, the Gryffindor sword over there, which looks awesome. And all the, all the paintings, again, all the portraits. And apparently the sorting hat somewhere as well, over there. And you can see two costumes door. That's the one that Richard Harris wore over there. I don't know if you can see it or not. And then Michael Gambon wore that one. 
Again, like I've mentioned before, my favourite dunk Dumbledore is always going to be Richard Harris. And so for that reason, I also prefer his costumes to uh, Michael Gambon's as well. The two cool sections that I just had a look at is the animal section over there, and you can see pictures of all the animal actors. Well, not all of them, obviously, but most of them that were in the film, like Hedwig's and um, Cookshanks, Minus Cat. And um, it's just it's amazing how much patience you need to work with animals, obviously. And it was cool to like learn how they use some of the animals with like special effects, like completely combined, basically. Because obviously they can't get actual animals to, like, for instance, bump into something or hit a window or something. So they need to use some special effects to do that. But then there's the actual animal flying, and then like they stop it. And it's just so cool for someone like me who loves editing and stuff. I think that's so cool. And here you've got Hagrid's hut which anyone who's watched Harry Potter would be familiar with it because it's appeared in pretty much all of them. And what they said is that it's really cool because um, they've, they've tried to make it look like Hagrid's giant, obviously, so like everything from the chairs and the tables and the sofas and everything there, <laughs> um, yeah, everything there has been made to look bigger than normal so that when like uh, the kids from Harry Potter would go and the Hagrid, it would look like they were tiny compared to Hagrid. And apparently they had two sets of it actually, so they, they had one normal sized one, so the actor playing Hagrid could actually like, use it properly, and then they mixed it up together. So it's just, again, so much work goes into these things, so much thought goes into things, it's amazing. We've got the Chamber of Secrets door behind me, which actually plays a big part of my childhood, because I remember clearly where I was when I read the book, The Chamber of Secrets, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. And I was about, again, I don't know, maybe like eight or nine years old, nine maybe 10, something like that, and I was just uh, reading uh, the, the part where Harry uh, hears about the Chamber of Secrets opening, and um, yeah, it was like late at night, not late at night, probably like 9 or something at night, that was late for me at the time, and I was reading it, and I was so shocked when I read the bit where it says, oh my god, the Chamber of Secrets has been opened, that I had to say it out loud, I was like, oh my god, to my brother, who's just standing over there, <laughs> I was like, Reza, can you believe it, the Chamber of Secrets door has been opened, and he got so scared because at the time he hadn't read any of the Harry Potter books it was just me who read them at the time and he had no idea what I, was, I meant but because I looked so terrified myself when I said it to him he looked so terrified as well because obviously I'm his older sister and whatnot so it's like a running joke between us now the Chamber of Secrets so I just had to look at the borough which is where the Weasleys live and uh, obviously this is like a really small part of the actual thing that they used uh, in the film but it's still really cool to see some of the details in it especially the clock which let me show you the clock is pretty cool. Um, apparently it was like an antique clock that they bought and they spent a couple of weeks just like making it look as if it was made. So, like you can see all the scissors there and uh, pictures that they added to it to make it look as if it was completely like made because the Weasleys obviously didn't have enough money and stuff and it's a big family so. Here we've got the Nimbus 2000, uh, Nimbus 2001 and the Firebolt and they all look Pretty awesome. So this section is probably one of the coolest sections in my opinion. It's a special effects section and it kind of explains how some of the stuff in the film were done. Um, as you can see that's um, Hagrid's motorbike over here which looks awesome. You've got like a moving broomstick, quite a few actually, and there's my brother over there. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just amazing how everything was done and all, like green screen and stuff obviously and you can see the visual effects team supervisors talking about it here. And, um, I don't know, I just, for me, it's something that's really interesting, special effects and stuff. I find it really interesting how people can make things look so cool, just with, like, computers and stuff, and look like some green screen. And I wish someone could just explain to me how, exactly how all of these things were done, and I wish I could do it myself, I'm not going to lie. went on the broomsticks and had a little fly around Hogwarts. How, how was that, Reza? Um, scary. Yeah, you looked a bit scared in your video. I was all happy, like, waving at everyone and loving life, and he was taking it very seriously. Where is this? We haven't been to the Terrier yet. Yeah? Oh, yo, 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 look at that, look at that. Look at Dobby over there. Yeah. The statues and stuff. Oh, that is him. <gasps> That's Umbridge. Yeah. I hate her. Although I do love the actress that plays it, Imelda Staunton. This is so cool. Oh, 
This is the coolest thing. <laughs> Everything is cool here, but look at us. How do you do that? There's a taking a selfie. This is literally the cool. Everyone's saying it's the best thing. <laughs> I'm saying the same thing. <laughs> this is probably the coolest thing I've seen so far. Everything's been really cool though, but I mean, just, yeah, the Death Eaters and oh god. So we're only about halfway through apparently, and we've been here for nearly three hours, which is crazy. And it's like maybe we're not going to get through everything in time because it's like an hour and a half left until they close. But Hogwarts Express is the next step. And wow, this is amazing. Oh my God, you've got, oh my God. This is the coolest thing. Wow. So guys, we're inside the Hogwarts Express now, as you can see all the rooms. Look, so, like basically exactly like they do in the films. It's amazing. Very small though, this hallway. Oh my God, look at that. It's really cool. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Can we actually go inside? I don't know. Probably not, but look at it. We've got some sweets over there and scarves and everything. It's really cool. And you can see the railway shop outside. And you can see Reza just <laughs> taking pictures of me sneakily whilst I'm vlogging. <laughs> go on then. Reenact something from one of the scenes. No, yeah, there's nothing here. Yeah, and we need like a... The thing is though, each of them are different, look. There's chocolate frogs over there as well. Do you mind if I sit there? All the other characters are full. That's not what it says. <laughs> That's not even what it says. Come on, tell me then. <laughs> Excuse me. Do you mind? Everyone else is full. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Whereas it's like so good at doing impressions and stuff. Oh, I really wish I could just go in them. I don't know if we're allowed or not. Maybe, maybe this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's, there's Death Eaters. Are they gone? I think. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so we're actually sat on a train now, kind of, sort of. This is a bit creepy. Thank goodness for that. They're definitely gone now. So come back out from under the seat. Oh, okay, now we can actually relax a bit and enjoy the, the scenes. Well, it's going really fast, isn't it? Getting some bottle beer from the spotted beer area. I've never tried it before, I'm really excited. Reza, it's ready here. Oh, cool. So, we're about to try our butter beers. It smells very sweet and nice, doesn't it? And see if we like it or not. Let's do it, yo. You ready? Cheers. Mm. Wow. Well, it tastes quite nice. Delicious. <laughs> it's really well with the tuna <laughs> Yeah, it tastes. Very sweet. And buttery. Exactly, obviously. So it's gotten dark now, as you can probably tell, it's like nine o'clock in the evening. There's a night bus, and it looks so freaking cool. Like, I wish we could go inside. I don't know, maybe we can. There's someone coming out of it. Can't, I don't know you can go to the very high top level, but there's Privet Drive over here. There's where the Dursleys live. Um, oh my God. Just, um, I can't stop saying, oh my God. So this is the inside of the night bus, all the beds and everything, very cool. Every place we go, I keep saying this is my favourite part, but I think this is definitely one of my favourite parts, because again, it's such an iconic part of the Harry Potter films, Harry's house, well not Harry's house, but the uncle's house, so Uncle Vernon and stuff, and Privet Drive. It's one of the first things I ever read. It's how the first Harry Potter book actually starts, the first like line of it um, mentions Privet Drive, so... For that reason, it's just a very cool place. So we're on this bridge now, which is again a very iconic bridge. Um, me and my brother, my brother was talking to one of the people working here at the moment, and um, what's really cool is that this is literally all they use for the film. Everything else is just special effects that are used afterwards in post-production, but literally that's it. Look how short it is. Hello. <laughs> yeah, look how, it's like a very short walk, but it looks so massive and grand, obviously, in the films. I think that's so cool. And yeah, all the filming bits were done literally 
on this thing, which really isn't that long, if you believe me, basically. I don't know if you can tell or not, but yeah, it's very cool. So we've got all the chess pieces here. Yep, just casually have a Hagrid's face here in front of me right now. Casual. Wait for it, guys. There's Argog over there. Oh my god, that's creepy. That's scary. And over here, we've got Buckbeak. That's not very scary. <laughs> 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 Welcome to Diagon Alley. It's where we are now. Very quiet because it's like this place is about to close. We're not about to, we've got an hour left, but it's very quiet. So if you don't want people around you when you wander around about, come to this. There's Gringotts, yo. Look, Reza. And Ollivanders. Oh my god, again, so much detail everywhere. This is so cool. Casually walking in Diagon Alley, looking at all the shops. There's the Weasley's Wizard Weezers, which looks awesome. What I've got here, I've got a white card model of um, Hogwarts here. <laughs> looks really cool. Um, yeah, and everything else. Look, there's a Whomping Willow here. I hate that tree. Dumbledore's office again. Where's this continuous? <laughs> selfies he's very good at taking selfies actually i wish i was as good as him i never take selfies though so don't get practice <laughs> um three broomsticks that's cute the extra the exterior of the borough again very cool all of this is so cool yo diagonally as well you guys <laughs> it's just taking pictures of me i hate it okay um the room of requirement yeah, this is more like the art stuff, the concept art that they use, and again, it shows how much work went into it. It's like I've, I've taught, I've said this probably about a million times in this video so far, but it, it's just amazing. It, it's, it blows my mind, it really does. There's the exterior and the interior of Hagrid's Hut, the Quidditch Tower, where people can just sit and relax and watch this thing, and yeah, the behind area of Hogwarts. And I mean, there you have it. The actual hot wall as well, not but the closest you can get to hot wall space. <sighs> the music is making me emotional. This is so cool. We're in the one shop now, and they've got so many ones. As Beth would say, they've got all the ones. Like seriously, so many. Where is it? Oh, cool. And that's down the road. Yeah. This is crazy. That's so cool. And then on the other side we have Rippergren. Okay. So we've got the most important one here. JK Rowling. Reza's considering getting that jumper, Ron's jumper, because obviously Reza and our like Ron. Right, let's end this video. I am back at home. Um, we ended up leaving the studio tours at 10 o'clock, which is when the studio tours closes. Um, so we actually kind of kind of had to rush the last bits of it because we just didn't have enough time I guess. Uh, people who'd been before told us that you know three hours should be enough and I thought yeah okay well three hours sounds about right. We were there for like four and a half hours and it definitely wasn't enough. <laughs> I could have spent at least another two hours there at least. Um, so I'm definitely going back at some point uh, and I definitely recommend it to anyone. Like I'm a big Harry Potter fan. I, I read the books when I was a child. I've watched all the films loads of times and I just I love Harry Potter. It's a big part of my childhood and growing up so you know it meant a lot to me but I think even if you're not that big of a Harry Potter fan even if you just like the films um, to some extent and stuff you'll enjoy it. Anyone who just likes Harry Potter a bit We'll get something out of the tour. It was just so good. Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> I didn't expect to be so moved by it, so I get so emotional by some of the stuff that I saw, but it was just mind blowing. <laughs> it was just, oh, I want to go and watch all the um, all the films again now, uh, back to back, and maybe even start reading the books again. I've read some of the books like two or three times now, uh, but I, I haven't read them in a while, so maybe I might just start reading them again. I don't know. And, um, I might do a haul. I bought some stuff, a few things from the shop thing, so I probably will do one. But one thing I will say is that the digital guide is definitely worth it because me and my brother both got that, and it, it it gives you so much information that you don't get if you don't have the digital guide. So 
100% worth it. And we didn't actually get have enough time to go through everything that we could have listened to, unfortunately. So that's a bit sad. But obviously, if we'd spent more time there, we could have listened to everything and, you know, enjoyed more and taken everything in a, a lot easier. So... But I de definitely recommend the digital guide, um, audio guide thing. And we also got the normal guide as well, which um, I'll show to you in the whole video that I do. But it was amazing. So, yeah, leave comments down below if you've been. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you next time. Bye.